and then after 80 minutes, they open the tendor, and then they pull out all the meat. Here we have our incredible lamb feast. Look at this. It's not just a piece of lamb. It's ribs, organs, liver, fat. What else do we have here? Welcome to Termes, Uzbekistan. This 2,500 year old city is all about history. It's literally an ancient frontier town, like something out of the wild west. We're visiting crumbling monasteries and beautiful complexes, and they are breathtaking. And we're also trying some outstanding Uzbek food, somsas, norin, a traditional Soviet breakfast, and the best baked lamb of my life. I just want to dive into a big pot of it. It's like a lamb orgasm in your mouth. You know what? Before this gets too crazy, let's jump into the video. Let's go to Termes, Uzbekistan. Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Shakir Sabz, Uzbekistan. Guys, I am so excited because today I'm going to be exploring this UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is famous for being the birthplace of Amir Tumur, which was basically the most important figure of the area in the 14th century. He was the king of all these lands. So right here, this is like the historical center. This is the old city. Obviously, they, you know, they renovated it because you could see like old stones and new stones. The gates completely renovated and right here we have a tourist map that shows us all different important sites within the walls. You have mosques, you have other, you know, I think there's restaurants here. What is this? It's a Kitab Mas, Malik Mas, so lots of mosques, like seven mosques in here. So many different things to see inside. Let's go inside the walled city. Let's explore. Uh, this is Aksaray. The, it was in the ancient, uh, like big gate of uh, Shahrzad city. Uh, now this is whole part of Aksaray. Uh, when it's uh, constructed, it was two times bigger, two times higher than uh, now. Uh, in uh, after then, uh, it destroyed this building. Okay, yeah. So it's a huge gate, and you know all this tile work outside. Lots of beautiful colors. That's obviously the Quran, right? Arabic. And then, yeah, this is the colors of Uzbekistan. Always the blue. Yes. Double that size. That's huge. Two meters is what? I mean, right now that's easily a ten-story building. So seventy-two meters. Wow, that's huge. It's thirty-two meters. Yes. 32 meters, whatever that's like, almost 100 feet. This massive gate was built in the 14th century and it still has all this tower still intact. Look at that, look at all that tile. Really incredible, wow. So blue in here. Let's get to the other side because the sun's not really cooperating right now. We're in the wrong time of day. You're gonna, you're gonna play a flute? So the gate's basically in ruins. Only a little bit of it still remains intact because this side is completely in ruins, right? Yeah. I mean, they've restored a bit of it, but you can't really fix it all. I mean, at least some of the tile work stayed. I mean, it is like roughly 600 years old. So I mean, for that to be that preserved, is pretty remarkable. I, for me, what it feels like is that it was obviously a gate, but it's a watchtower as well. So it would look over, see if the invaders coming, especially because it was double the height. So from double the height, they could look over the entire valley here and see everything. And that's Amir Timur, the most important figure in Uzbekistan history. Uh, this church uh, constructed in 1996 year. Uh, this this year was named also Amir Timur. So they put the statue up here on the 660th anniversary of his birth. 1996 and he was born in 1330 something 1336 once you pass the statue you get into this path right and it's really like spotless this is one of the cleanest unesco world heritage i've ever been to for real it is like perfect and there's also a lot of kids here on bicycles through the it's a great place for them just to play it's like an open air park right over here we have like mini gardens we have lots of different flowers and then over here we have the koba right, which is where we're going now. And across from it, you have the museum of Amir Timur. And that museum basically shows you the, like depicts his life. And they also have some jewelry, some swords and other things that he, you know, used to wear. This is Karo, um, Koba Karwan Sarai. 
it was used as a caravan sarai. There are many buildings next to the place, a hammam, bazaar, and charsu. Yeah, so they built it here because this is where people would stay, and then obviously it'd be in the middle of where they would have to go take a shower, where they would have to go to, to you know, to buy some, you know, groceries at the bazaar, buy, you know, clothing, etc. So the caravan sarai, their hotel, has been converted into a restaurant in the middle. Whoa, what an echo. All right, so in the middle, we have this huge, like, dining area. We have these tables, huge tables, and then to the left, to the right, all around are all the rooms. So let's go to a room that's empty. And here we go, one of the rooms. Okay, now I get it. Perfect. Wow, really cool in here. Yeah. It's hot outside and it's cool inside here. Yes. So obviously there was no air conditioning, so this is a perfect insulation here. That was a really, really beautiful okay. restaurant. Huge. Whoa, the sun's super bright. Wow, so we have a mosque in front of us, an old mosque? Yeah. yeah. What mosque is that? Uh, this is Abdushkur Ogarlik Mosque. This mosque has 12 pillars. Every single one is completely unique. You know, obviously this has been restored, but this was the main mosque right behind the hotel. So people from the hotel, you know, they didn't have to go too far to go to pray. So, you know, five times a day you have to go pray. I actually love the colors on top, the blue. That's Uzbekistan, I can't even say that enough. I mean, it's just Uzbekistan. This is the colors of Uzbekistan. Green, blue, always. I really love the pillars. The, the, are those restored too, the pillars? Yeah. Yeah, they're restored. Man, they're amazing. Like, they really are. The designs, beautiful wood, and you have this like white marble for the building. Uh, this is Charsu. It was used there uh, as a market in the Silk Road. And you can see there are four rooms, four uh, gates. There was many embroideries. So basically this bazaar was for crafts, yeah. not for food. No, no, no. Just crafts? Yes. Okay, so this is a crafts bazaar. I mean, it's a very small bazaar. As you can see, it's really, really tiny compared to the ones I've been to in Tashkent and Samarkand. We have huge bazaars. This was a very, very small one. And it was literally like a stepping stone away from the hotel. So from there to here, you could buy your crafts. And yeah, I mean, it's a nice building. It's So this is also restored as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you can see it. You see it where the old stones were, or the old bricks. Yeah. And you see the new bricks, the, the difference in color. Obviously, it's different type of cement they're using. Wow, I love the door. The door's original, or no? Um, no. Also, if I wish, or... So 14th to 15th century, Korsu Complex. The name of the building is Kukumbas. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Amir Timur's grandson built this building in the 14th century and the dome is the biggest in Uzbekistan only the dome and uh, the dome ancient one in Shakrasabz So it's the biggest dome mosque in Uzbekistan Wow, massive structure Oh wow So is this the biggest mosque in Shakrasab? Yes Yeah? Incredible And I love how you have the beautiful like aqua color right on top and you have all the Quran written throughout in this like tile. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I hadn't seen something this big yet. And I've been to Kiva, Bukhara, and Samarkand, and, but I haven't seen a dome like this. Yeah, you might, you might see it. We're entering? Yeah, we are entering the mosque. All right, I didn't know we could enter. Yeah, you know, there's always restrictions with mosques. Sometimes they don't let you come in. Most times they won't ever let you film in the praying hall. Usually it's just outside in the courtyard where you can film. Wow, this is nice, man. The entrance of the mosque is very similar to the one that's on Samarkand. I mean, almost exactly the same. Lots of blue, lots of green. Man, the work of art, man. This is just impressive. It's incredible to see this because, you know, you don't see this anywhere else in the world. Only Central Asia. Amir, Timur, uh, Amir Timur's grandson, uh, Mirza Olubi, built this building. Uh, he was an astronomist and learned the stars and asteroids, some uh, sky objects. You can see there are uh, some stars. So that's the biggest difference I see here from the stuff I saw in Samarkand. This one has stars right there. I didn't notice that at all. I mean, it's up there, but it's like there's so much going on. So many colors, so many like the intricate work there, the symmetry. Every time you're entering a mosque, you have to take off your shoes. And if you're a woman, you have to cover your hair. And as soon as you enter, Look at this masterpiece. Whoa, so white, so white. And this is still in use. People still come here and pray every single day. Wow, damn man, what is all this? 
So it's just a lot of stars, right? Because he's an astrologist. He like puts stars everywhere. Wow, this is beautiful. It's ships and uh, it was uh, described the uh, paradise. A shapes is paradise? Yes. Wow. It's their door of the paradise. Throughout the entire mosque, what you see is a lot of trees, a lot of stars, a lot of blue, a lot of white, a lot of orange. And that basically means energy. You know, it's all about energy. They would never use black or red. That's just, that's just not energetic at all. And over here, as you see, I mean, it's just a lot of flowers, a lot of trees and stars. I mean, that's basically what he did, he did here. So many different designs, but it's all very similar and it's just never ending. Let me see that. So this, this is all painted? Wow, that is amazing. This was all painted 500 years ago? Yeah. Okay guys, we have one more site to visit before we go to dinner. We're going to a crypt. We're going to the crypt of Amir Timur's like mentor. What was his name? He is Sheikh Shamsuddin Kulal. Okay. And it's literally right there. I see the building right there. Might be like a two minute walk. After we're gonna go see Amir Timur's son's crypt. Jahangir uh, Mirza. So this is it. This is the crypt. He's right here. Wow. Beautiful marble tomb. It's funny because they're like super thin, no? Like very thin, very small. And it has written the Quran all around it. And what's this on top? I haven't seen this before. This is a unique stone. And uh, there is no in uh, such house except this one. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen this on top of a crypt before. Yeah. And then right above us, as you can see, lots of blue, lots of white, very beautiful, lots of stars. I mean, he really is in an incredible room. Wow, the room is beautiful. So this tomb dates back over 500 years and it's still perfectly intact. The room is like, it looks like it was painted yesterday. That's how perfect it is. It's like perfect. Okay, let's go to the other crypt. Right here's the mosque and then Right there yeah. is the tomb. The crypt of Amir Timur's son. Let's fly. I got here like a 4.30. It's around seven. Yeah, it's seven. Sun's at seven. I think the only thing we're missing besides this crypt would be the museum. So this building is called Dor Sordat. And this was supposed to be a mausoleum for all of Amir Timur's like family, right? But I saw most of his family in Samarkand. The only person here is his son, right? Yes. That's it. Yes. So only his son is in here. And the building's like actually partially in ruins. I mean, you see some of the tiles that were here, like some of the ceramic work, the blue, the green, but you don't see the whole thing, right? Most of the wall has fallen. And this is the crypt. It's definitely not as beautiful as the last one. The last one's like gorgeous, beautiful tomb, you know, all marble, the Quran. I mean, just such a work of art. This one, looks like a big brick. The only thing I do like about it is what it says right here. It says the wise man relies on his endeavor and action and the fool one relies on his riches. So remember, always your legacy counts more than your riches. Whatever you work for, you want everybody to remember you by. Your riches, they die when you die. All right, so we've been building up an appetite over these past two hours and now we're going to have some dinner at which restaurant? Koba. Koba. We're going straight back to the Caravase. What is it called? The hotel? Caravansarai. Caravansarai. To the Caravansarai. So, obviously, we have to go eat there. It's right here. They have traditional food. It looks amazing. Huge dining hall. I hope we get a private room, though. I want a private room. Private room? <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> dude. I'm joking. I'm joking. And here we are, back in Koba. Where are we going to sit, my friend? Assalam. I really want to show you a lot of traditional food from this area. So I decided to go with the Koba salad, which is like a beef salad. We got a soup. We have a kebab that's cooked in the oven, like a tandoori kebab. Then we got some like fried dumplings, right? Fried dumplings, very nice. And we have another kebab that's on the grill. So, I mean, we've got a variety, and then we're also gonna try some wine from the area. You know, this, this area produces wine, so I gotta try some wine. I'm only getting a glass. I didn't, you know, there's no need to get a bottle. I'm not drinking a bottle by myself, and this guy's not drinking either, so. Time to try the wine. Whoa, it's super fruity. Like, extremely fruity. Mmm. I knew it was gonna be a little fruity when I tried the grapes on the street because they were so full of water. So our first dish has arrived and this is a beef kebab. Oh, it's so hot, you have to grab it from the bottom. Whoa. Damn, 
it's so hot. <laughs> you touch it here? So because we're not sharing one, you got your own, I'm gonna get this like this. Mm. Oh, amazing, amazing, wow. Mm. Oh, so juicy. Oh man, doing on the grill like this is so amazing. Just keep going. Mm. I have to say though, Uzbekistan really is competing with India with the best kebabs. They really are. I cannot get enough of this, man. Whoa. It's so good. Okay, so we have a huge assortment of food. We got the soup, we have beef, we have more beef, right? And then we have beef salad. All right, so I think I have to start off with the beef salad because, you know, obviously salad goes first before everything. Wow, look at this, just like a mix of cucumbers. Wow, has some sesame seeds, has like balsamic vinegar. You got some tomatoes, some carrots, some beef. Ooh, this looks so good, dude. This looks like the best salad I'm gonna have so far on the trip, this one. Salad time, mm. it's gonna be so refreshing. Mm. Wow, it is like a balsamic, oily, but the sesame, the sesame is the best part about this. Nice, refreshing, crunchy, juicy salad. Is that chicken, beef, carrots? Let me try some. Mm. Everything's cut into like dices, right? So you have the tomato, the potato, the beef. Mm. And a little bit of rice. It's fantastic, man. Everything's so good here. Great restaurant. Koba, have to come. All right, so next up we have two beef dishes. I really don't know what the difference is here, except this one has sauce, and this one doesn't. This one has bones, bigger, juicier, a lot of fat. This one, the opposite. So I'm just gonna dive in, grab a bit of each. Mmm, nice chunky beef. Different flavor, very oily, a little bit of fat, pretty good. And over here, it's like so different. It's like everything's just bones. Mmm. This is the ribs. The fat just comes off. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look how fatty this piece is. What is this? And this is the rib right here, right? Open it up. Oh, look at that. All that flesh. Oh, that's too good. I really don't want to eat all that fat. I'm really just looking for flesh in here. Oh wow, the meat with the fat, such an amazing contrast. You have this tender meat, and then you have straight gelatin. Rahmat. Rahmat, Rahmat. Wine is the best. The best. <laughs> no vodka, no vodka. No vodka, no. No vodka, no, no. no. <laughs> Only wine. Only wine, all right, all right. <laughs> Rahmat, 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 Rahmat. Oh, 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 ow. <laughs> Okay, you too, you too. <laughs> Ouch. All right, everyone, so that is it. Our afternoon is over. We explored all of this UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are so many things, like six different sites. I mean, but it's really, really small area, so you can really do them in a three, four hour span. Even me taking photos and video, I did it like in two and a half hours. I suggest you definitely give yourself at least half day here. Come here from Samarkand, do a day trip here. You know, have some lunch, explore the sites, and then go back, or you can do what I'm doing and go all the way down to Termes on the border with Afghanistan. And yeah, the food, the food was so good right now. The kebab, the soup, beef, beef, beef all day. Here in Uzbekistan, it's all about the beef. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan, Central Asia. Where have you been?
Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Shahi Sabs, Uzbekistan. Today, I'm actually doing a little road trip. I'm driving straight south, five hours to Termiz, the border town with Afghanistan. It's also really close to Turkmenistan and Tajikistan. Oh, I can't wait to explore these roads. Can't wait to see the scenery, see if we see any markets, probably try some food, maybe some fruits. And the way it works here is basically you just gotta hire a taxi and go and it's really affordable and we're about to get in a taxi you driving me salam ah. salam yeah my big bag never fits in the trunks of any of these cars <laughs> it's really funny <laughs> let's go to termes five hour drive whoa <laughs> we've been on the road for about 25 minutes and the road that we're taking is uh it's not it doesn't have potholes but it's extremely bumpy so if he's going too fast, we like hit some air. <laughs> it's really funny with this guy. Especially because he doesn't speak English, so we're just like laughing. It's really, really funny. And then, yeah, this is all just like fertile ground, right? Everywhere here, you're seeing guys selling, you know, watermelons. There's donkeys, <laughs> there's horses, there's cows. To the left, there's more like the mountain area. So I guess that's more like Tajikistan over there. Tajikistan is that area. And then this is obviously Uzbekistan for oof, forever. Uzbekistan is a huge country in Central Asia. Well, there are the dogs, the drugs. And there's a lot of dogs jumping over the, the median here. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is all farmland. Basically, woo! <laughs> he saw him, oh my God. That dog was wild. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, this, guy, this is how it's gonna be, guys. It's gonna be a fun road trip. We're gonna see some stuff. Hopefully, we see more food. I'm really, really hungry right now. You know, waking up this early really, uh, it's hard because you get really, really hungry. I've been up already almost two hours, so, so yeah, my appetite is there. So the road up here is actually way better than it was before. Before it was like, you know, really bumpy and like re really like hilly in a way. Like it would fly up and down. This one's like perfectly paved. Like it's like a brand new road. Oh, and now we have some trees. Look, what happened? The vegetation just changed. Like it feels like a whole different place now. This is incredible. So now we're gonna look for a place to eat. Hopefully we find it in the next like five, 10 minutes. It's already 8.06. Been on the road for roughly like 100 minutes, roughly like a little past 100 minutes. Oh man, we gotta eat soon, man, soon. So he's trying to find me some breakfast. <laughs> he's just asking for where, where is the closest place? Whoa. Oh my god, there's a butcher's right there. Pigs hanging. Oh, there's, there's food, there's food, there's food everywhere. Melone, watermelon. So we're in a little town. What town are we in? What town is this? Do we know? Oh wow, Somsa. Somsa. Bula? Yeah. Yeah. Somsa. Wow, this is a different type of Somsa. This is like a big Somsa. It's like a huge one, like my hand. Whoa. So this lady, all she sells is Somsa. We also got some like, I think it's like a tomato broth. But this somsa looks a little different from the other ones I've had because it's like, you know, it's round, it's thick, it's dense, it's full of beef, got mad onions in there. And this is how you eat it. Oh, wow, wow. The amount of onions and beef, mmm, baked to perfection. It's a little hot. I like how there's not too many spices, and outside it's a little crunchy. Inside the dough is very soft. There's so much beef and so many onions. The samosa itself is so different from a samosa in India, in empanadas like in Argentina, in Latin America. So different. It's not fried, baked, right? Sometimes they make them in tandoor. This is such an amazing thing to have for breakfast. I don't really love eating so many onions like this, but this is really delicious. All right, so you're saying to put some of this. What is this? Hmm? My taxi driver here is the man. He really is. Okay, so before I finish my somsa, they brought us this incredible salad. Tomato salad with cucumbers, onions. Oh my God. 
Mm. 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 Very nice, yeah. Mm. 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 That creamy dressing. It's not, this is not like a Caesar, but it's it's similar. There's a little bit of cheese in it. Very solid. Tomatoes in Uzbekistan are the best. And if you guys didn't know, these are the cups in Uzbekistan. These gas. These the cups. Yeah, the gas. So I, you can get gas water, regular water, but they serve it in these cups. The gas, but these gas. Okay, man? A tea? 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 Choy. Choy. Oh, last bite of the somsa. So my taxi driver went a little crazy. I thought we were having the salt salad and that's it. But no, he actually got a huge beef dish. Oh my God. Mm. I didn't expect to eat this for breakfast. And look, right here, this is the liver. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. bread. And he also gave me some bread. So I'm gonna put the liver inside the bread. Made myself like a little liver sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah, put it in here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Some tomato. Oh my god. Die, die, die. <laughs> I'm having mad fun with this guy. I had one little hard piece and the rest is like butter. This is the rib, right? Wow. Take off some of that bones. Mm. Oh wow. Meaty, fatty. Oh. What a breakfast. That's like gelatin. Oh my god. Get the bread. Get some of that sauce. It's delicious. It's delicious tomato cheesy dressing. Gotta go in here. Rahmat. I'm done. I thought really the samosa was the only thing we're eating. And the salad came. And that, yeah. The onions. Onions. Good. Mm, the green tea is really nice. I love the tea up here in Uzbekistan. It's so good. Woo! Wow, what an epic breakfast. So huge. I thought we were just having the samsa, but no, they had to bring out a tomato salad, a beef dish, some bread, some tea. Wow, so filling. Everything was so delicious. All right, guys, so we have to continue our road trip. We still have about three hours to go. Let's do this. We're currently passing through a small town. You can see a big, big market. Everybody's surrounded. Lots of cars everywhere. And I wanted to tell you, you know, for me, my favorite thing to, about traveling is the road trip experience. You know, flying is cool. Trains are nice. But the road trip is really where you feel the country. You can really see the culture. You know, you interact with locals. You eat their food, you experience, you know, really what it's all about. And you pass through all these small little places that you would never have seen before if you were taking a flight or a train. You know, that's sort of how it usually is. So for me, my favorite way to travel is by car. Get in the car, drive, or be driven, and just go. Go, 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 go. <laughs> okay, so we're pulling up to a gas dish right now. Oh, when you go at five in the morning, when you go on these road trips, man, I think the heat also, it's really, really hot outside, it's like boiling. This is not like a regular gas station. I don't know exactly what it is because they're not getting gas, they're doing something else. Like they're putting it into the engine. So I have no idea what they're doing. I don't even think it's oil change, but everybody's doing it here. And one thing I gotta say is that this is definitely the hardest place I've been in Uzbekistan. It's scorching. It has to be easily like 95, 100 degrees right now. Every single person is staying in the shit as you can see. No one like rests in the sun. It's extremely hot. Like man, being out there for a second, I was boiling. Here it's cool, there's wind. You, know, you get a little bit of, you know, breeze. But over there it's like, 
Like if I step out here. Ooh, that sun is brutal. How is that gas? This can't be gas. It looks like it's just something pressure. I'm so confused. So confused. So our road trip to Termes is almost done. We have roughly about 30 minutes. I'm looking here on Google Maps and I see that we are in, in that little pocket, you know, that little pocket where it separates Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. And this is the only road that goes to the capital from here. The other road goes to Tajikistan, so to Dushanabe. Dushanabe. And uh, yeah, I mean, here we go. It's, it's super hot. I was just reading right now that it's the hottest area in the country, so Termes is officially the hottest area in all of Uzbekistan. One of its main attractions is a rock cut Buddhist temple complex called Karatepa. So there's Buddhism down here. They also have Kampiya Tepe, which is one of Uzbekistan's oldest archaeological sites. There's also an archaeological museum. And back in 2002, they celebrated the 2,500 year anniversary. So it's an extremely ancient city. And I gotta give a big shout out to my boy Brandon for sending me this info. Brandon, you're the best, man. And yeah, I mean, we're almost there, but God, it's scorching. And luckily, I'm not sweating too much because of the wind. But when you step outside, it's just unbearable, unbearable. I'm really nervous about how I'm gonna do the next uh, next 48 hours here in Termes. After a five hour drive, we finally have arrived here in Termes. We're sort of uh, complicated here. It's sort of complicated because we're trying to find out where the people are that are meeting me. So I'm basically meeting with each one of the tourism boards, little government, you know, boards here at each place, at each city I'm visiting. And oh my God, <laughs> it's scorching. We're asking for directions because we don't know exactly where we're going. This guy's not from here, obviously. So my driver's still very confused of where this place is. So he's asking and asking and asking basically everybody, you know, where is this place? Where is this place? Where is this place? But what I've noticed is that this city is, uh, has really wide streets, lots of green. Right here to the right, we have a park. And some of the older buildings look very Soviet. Obviously, Soviets were here, so you have that Soviet architecture style. And over here, I mean, very nice little park. Ferris wheel and we're looking for a hotel. That's why I'm 100% I'm sure we're looking for the hotel. Hello. Hello. Assalam. Assalam alaikum. Pa ruski ni gavarite. No speak Russia. No speak Uzbek. No speak Uzbek. Yeah, so which hotel? Which hotel? Hotel Silk Road. Silk Road Hotel? Yes. Awesome. Best hotel. Yes, yes, yes. Best, best hotel. hotel. Awesome, well, awesome. I'm sure, I'm sure it's the best hotel. Yeah. Silk Road Hotel? Come on. So many hotels in this, in this strip right here. Bank, hotel, bank, hotel. I've seen stuff like this in Moldova as well. Very similar to Moldova. So like all these countries up here, Northern Central Asia are part, were part of Soviet Union. And yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, so it's what? It's retail, just retail and housing, retail and housing. That's all it is here. Lots of green as well. And I, I can't wait to see my hotel, man. The Silk Road Hotel, the best. Silk Road. Oh. Made it to the hotel. Silk Road Termes. Wow, they're all about the camels here. My friend, good times? We had a good time, we ate good food. Somsa. I just checked into the Silk Road Hotel and this is my room. Huge room. Got a queen size bed over there. Actually, I think it's a king size bed. And then I got this couch, little seating area. It gave me lots of water, because obviously here in Termes, it's really, really hot, so you gotta drink water, gotta stay hydrated. And this is my bathroom. Whoa, this is nice. Super nice bathroom. Whoa. Okay, right, so I don't have a shower, I have a huge tub. What is this? <laughs> That's awesome. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the journey from Shahi Sabs all the way down to Termes. It was a five hour drive. I mean, there's no other way to get here from there. You have to drive all the way down. It's really affordable. I think it costs like, oh man, I don't know, it's like 40 or $50 US to get down here with the taxi. So super affordable. And I highly suggest you stop at that place where we stopped. It's around two hours in. So two hours down the road, you get to this little you know, little restaurant on the side of the road. They have like one table outside in the shade and there you can have delicious somsas, delicious salad and mouth-watering beef. Like that food was epic, epic food. And then after that, we kept going and you start seeing the landscape changing, changing, it gets hotter and hotter. You see more vegetation, more plant life, lots of, you know, watermelons, 
figs, so many different fruits and vegetables down here. Lots of fruit, like a lot of fruit. And yeah, guys, we're here in Termes, the hottest place in Uzbekistan, right on the border with Afghanistan, you know, southernmost city, southernmost town. And guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. And stay tuned for the next episodes in Termes. Where have you been? Peace. What's up guys, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful, super hot Tervens, Uzbekistan, the southernmost city in the country, right on the border with Afghanistan. It's actually the hottest area in Uzbekistan. It's really hot, it's like 100 degrees. But that's not stopping us from exploring. Today we're gonna start off here at Rich Restaurant. We're gonna try some delicious Uzbek food. We got meat, got soups, got salads. And after this, we're gonna go explore some of their historical sites. If you guys didn't know, this is like the crossroads of cultures and religions. Muslims, Buddhists, I mean, you name it, they got it. So let's go inside, let's eat some food. I'm really hungry. Otto. Yes. Yo, Otto, you're taking me around today. Sure. We, <laughs> we, we will go around and you will see the traditional foods right now and just make yourself comfortable here. Yeah, so Otto's gonna be taking me around. He speaks English, great guy. And yeah, this restaurant, as you can see, it's a huge dining hall where everybody's eating and we're sitting in a private dining room. I mean, this is a really, really big table, but I decided to sit here. It's a lot easier, a lot of good light. All right, so we got a straight up feast right here. This is insane. We got lamb kebabs, we got a soup. We have one, two, three, four, five different salads. We also got some bread and we got some delicious wine. So fruity, mm, mm, like cherries. Wow, I'm gonna start off with the lamb kebab. I love lamb so much, you have no idea. It's so juicy, I love the charcoal on top, very tender. And next up, we have a little bit of the fat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The fat's the best part. It really is the best part, like gelatin, I gotta say, this is a stellar kebab. Kebabs in Uzbekistan are king. Mm. Just the right amount of salt too. Mm. So next up we're trying the most traditional soup in Uzbekistan, it's called mastaba, which is basically a vegetable soup with rice and beef. So you have carrots, you have uh, potatoes. Mm. Mm. Oh, I love the broth on this one. Mmm. Also some tomatoes in there as well, right? Oh wow. The combination of textures, the contrast is amazing. Mm. I just love it because it's really like a soup you would have like if you're sick. Mmm. Good for your health. Next I'm gonna try some of this sour cream with some bread. It's more like sour yogurt. It's like in India you would call it buttermilk, but this is a really thick version. Delicious bread. This one's actually a lot denser, not so fluffy, not so airy. It's a really good combination with the sour cream yogurt. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump on to all these sides. I got like, oh my God. I mean, I got four. I have the fifth one back here, but the fifth one is just like raw. If you're a vegetarian, you literally have to be like, take out the beef, because it's always coming. Oh, and a little bit of cheese too. Mmm. Nice, fresh. Oh, the peas too. You got some cheese, cucumbers, olives, tomatoes. So there's another salad you'll find throughout the country. It's uh, very similar to a Greek salad. Obviously the difference is no feta cheese. But they have a super like dense cheese. Almost like a manchego. Not manchego though. Next I'm gonna jump on my favorite salad. This is my favorite salad in Uzbekistan. It's basically a soy sauce salad with tomatoes. Cucumbers and beef. Oh, I just drench it in the soy right there, boom. Yeah, everything's local, right? That's why it's so good, it's so fresh. Like literally, they pulled it out of the farm right outside. Mmm. I just love the soy sauce. It actually feels like a soy sauce, but it has like a little bit of balsamic, but I'm sure it's just soy, some oil, sesame seeds as well. 
for me, I would call this like an Asian salad. I've had a few of these in, in America. Asian style salads, they have the beef always. Oh. I really love the sides here. They have great ingredients, all super fresh. Oh, here we go. My favorite, the wild mushrooms. Mmm, these are like buttery mushrooms. And it's super light dressing. This one also has a green onion and it has beef as well. So every single one has beef, right? Except that one? Yeah. So this is fried lamb. I thought it was on the grill, but he said, no, no, they fry it. They put it in oil and they fry it. Look, you got a big piece of the fat, so it's lamb chop. The fat is the best thing for you, man. I think the doctor's lying. <laughs> it's a fry, but it's not like a deep deep fried, you know? Mmm. But the lamb here in Uzbekistan competes with the lamb in Greece. It, it does. My wife's not Greek, bro. I, I eat lamb every day. And what you really have to do is you have to get in here and pull off all the extra, you know, the fat right there in the skin. Mm hmm. That's the best part. I hate when people leave that. I'm like, nah, give me that. I'll eat the bone. I'm like a dog. <laughs> so if you didn't know, Uzbekistan has tea as well. China is obviously famous for it. India is famous for it. But Uzbekistan tea is amazing. It's mountain tea. That's what they call it here, mountain tea. Mm, yeah, it's perfect for, you know, digesting. Wow, a lot of food. That's a lot of food. Five salads, two different lambs. Personally, my favorite was the kebab. Oh, it's too good. It's a little cold now. I mean, in comparison to what it was earlier, but... Mmm. So good. One last bite for good measure. Thank you for a visit. Thank you. Wow, what a delicious meal. Oh, super full. Extremely full of lamb. Let's go explore Thermes. Can't wait to see what this place is about. I know we're going to a huge mosque and we're also gonna see a Buddhist like structure, an ancient one. This city is like 2,500 years old. A little past that they celebrated 25, their 25th 100 year anniversary in 2002. Next up, we're headed to an ancient Buddhist monastery. Otto, what's the name of it? It's the name of the monastery is Fayostepa. Fayostepa, and it dates back to the third century BC. It's about a 15 minute drive from the city. Let's make our way over there. And that's it. After a quick 15 minute ride, we've arrived here at Fayostepa, UNESCO World Heritage Site, right here on the border with Afghanistan. Uh, they were coming here to pray, and also the, the man is, the watcher will open up the gates right now. I'm gonna go in and see. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside the stupa. The watcher says that Japanese came and they were praying and they brought the gold and making goals here that shows that they, they came here uh, and they're praying here. It's just like mud, basically mud. Wow. So this is the original stupa and this was built over obviously to protect it and give you like the, you know, the new stupas. The way they build the new stupas is like this form. So amazing. History. Now the only problem is how do I get out of here? Can you grab that? Okay. So let's keep exploring the grounds. There's still a lot to see here. You have the dormitories, you have the kitchen. I mean, everything's obviously just ruins. I've seen lots of ruins like this also in like Bulgaria and lots of places in the Balkans, but that's more like Roman ruins. This is just like a Buddhist monastery. Wow, this is so beautiful. So now we're gonna enter the dormitories. Oh wow. As you can see, there was pillars all over, right? Pillars throughout the whole thing. In the middle, I guess this was a courtyard, right? And over here, each one of these was like a room, right? And then, I'm sure it's the kitchen. Oh, wow. Oh, uh, the, are these writings? No, right? These writings? Oh, it's just the weather? Yeah. So it's sort of deteriorating the structure? Mm, that's bad. Oh. You see these kind of holes? They, these holes, they, they were putting the Buddhist statue to pray. Each, each room has kind of 
holes and uh, they, they found the statues of Buddha. Dude, this is way bigger than I saw from over there. I mean, it just keeps going, right? Then over here, more pillars. So this is the bottoms. So right here, this is the sauna. And the reason they think it's a sauna is because this would be a place where you would sit, right? Right here, you sit down in the steam. So Otto, what are you saying? That they used to bring water using mud pipes from the river? Yeah, yeah, sure. You, they used to brew the water from Amudaria with uh, using mud pipes. So that's how they would have water throughout the complex and here in the in the spa or in the sauna. Yeah. The, uh... the history behind Fayo is that in 1968, a shepherd actually, you know, found the site. He found a piece of it, and then he told obviously the government, which was the Soviet Union. They came, started investigating, and they started uncovering it. Eventually, it became part of UNESCO. And now the biggest issue they're facing at the moment is that the buildings are falling apart. You can see lots of different spots where there's cracks, there's bricks falling. And the biggest thing is that there's a lot of rain and heat. Now what they have to do is the government has to put a huge tent, like a white tent over it. I've seen it in other places like in Malta, in a lot of like, uh, you know, ancient in ruins they'll always cover it with a tent because if not it just you know it goes away completely like in 30 50 100 years mm -hmm. this is not here anymore if they don't start like maintaining it as of right now so you don't want to lose your history let's get a tent on here <laughs> no for real they need to put a tent it's like it's like right away it, you can see i mean you can see the cracks like everywhere everywhere just cracks and things are like falling apart and that's all rain so deteriorating right here whoa that's like a 2,500 year old stem. Fire step up. Now, where are we going next? It's, it's called Kora Tepa. Kora Tepa. Kora, Kora, Kora. Black hill, like. That's where we're going next? Yes, it's not far from here. It's also Buddhist place. It's all right over there, on the other side. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. It's right there? Yeah, it's, it's all covered. It's all covered, that one. That's good. So, as a tent. Nice. Ooh. I mean, it is really, really hot. Is there any animals out here? Is there any snakes, turtles, anything like that? There should be snakes over there. There should be snakes. I'm sure there's snakes. There's always snakes in the desert. <laughs> Whoa. We're going this way? This ancient Buddhist monastery is very similar to the last one. The biggest differences are is that it doesn't have a huge terrace like the other one did. This one has, you know, mainly like big rooms, really big rooms, really high walls. And then over here, the part that's covered, this is actually the stupa. So this is where they would go in and pray. They'd go into this hole, you know, the statue of the Buddha would be there. They'd go inside, they'd pray, they'd come out. They, unfortunately, they haven't covered it completely. They gotta just finish that so it doesn't get, so it doesn't lose more of the wall. And whoa, see, like it literally falls off. It falls apart so easily. Yeah, don't, don't even touch it. Don't even walk on it, nothing. And then, uh, yeah, just keep walking around. See what else we see here. I mean, basically, it's all in ruins. Uh, this, they're slowly fixing this one he was saying. There you go, I mean, it's basically lots of different hallways to different rooms. And over there, the far end to the left, you see the river, and right there, that's Afghanistan. So Afghanistan's literally right here. And this is a structure, wow. I mean, hopefully nothing falls apart on me here. Well, look at this room. So lots of rooms, lots and lots and lots of rooms. Okay, so the terrace is actually right there. The terrace is right in the middle there. I don't see any bases of pillars but at least you see there is a huge terrace. So it's like another like tiny monastery area. David, as you see, these are the rooms, uh, as you see as on bow, and there is a corridor which uh, divides the terrace between them. Yeah, so all these, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then, I mean, it keeps going. Yes, yeah, so many different rooms around here, and then they're all divided by the hallway. So the hallway, the corridor, goes around them, and then in the middle is the terrace. So you have the terrace, the hallway goes around that, and then all the rooms, it's sort of like a hotel. This is sort of like what you would see. Hotel similar to this, obviously this is an ancient monastery, very different people come here and just pray, you know, the monks. Just come, pray, and that's it. Well, I think it's time to go, my friend, because it's getting really, really hot. Okay, you have to be really careful going down, because literally I'm standing on an ancient mud building here. How do I get down? Okay, go this way. Got to be really careful, and there's actually no one here. Like most places, most ancient sites around the world, you always have like some security and stuff. Oh, where are we going next? Another site? Um, next, Let's go. we'll go to Al Hakim at Tirmizi. It's not far from here. 
We drove for literally like two minutes and we got here and we crossed through this gate and then he's like, hey David, this is a Silk Road gate. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, this is actually where they would cross from Afghanistan all the way up through Uzbekistan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you can go up here? Yeah, we can go up from, from the left side. For sure these walls have been restored. They couldn't have survived this long, this perfectly intact. And here we are on top of the gate slash wall and basically they kept this so you guys can see where the silk road used to pass through they basically he's saying that it's like a gate for customs obviously so whoever's passing through here has to pay a tax and goes through it's probably used for the customs right here at the very end you know beyond this you can see the river and past the river is afghanistan over here we have the site we're going to what's the name of it al hakim at termizi al hakim at termizi monument i mean these names are really really hard <laughs> there's so many names it's just it's very confusing for me but yeah i mean this is basically similar to a fortification you would see in europe you know whenever you go to any fortified towns or any castles you go up to the walls and you walk around you know this one is still intact but some people have put graffiti obviously as you can see some people i mean i don't know why you would do this don't ever like vandalize anything i mean but why would you ever vandalize an historical site like this Man, being out in the sun all day like this. Al Haki Atemazi Monument. Yeah, okay, so this was a mosque. Obviously, now it's just a monument, so it's not a working mosque. People can't come here and pray. And it's surrounded by this huge garden. Lots of beautiful trees, lots of flowers. Very bright. They have music playing. There's dragonflies. There's also a lot of flies. That's something he was telling me. This area is known for its flies. Obviously, wherever it's really, really hot, like desert, there's always flies. I've noticed always, that. I, I, every place I've been, it's always like that. You have flies all over the place. And uh, here it is, right? That's it? No, th th this is a museum. Oh, it's, it's the a, museum? Yeah, it's a museum. So where is the monument? It's right over there, on the left side. We are about to enter the mausoleum of who? Al-Hakim al-Tirmizi. Okay, so this guy was basically one of the most famous figures in Islamic history. So I'll give you a little bit of history about him. He was an author of a number of religious philosophical works, a religious leader, an outstanding theorist of Islamic mysticism, and a prominent scholar, and was a founder of the Dervish Order. And right here, when you're about to enter, they have some graves on the right side, and these are like 17th to 19th century graves. And then this, this actual structure, the mausoleum dates back to the 10th through 15th centuries. So it took them about 500 years to build it. And to go inside, we have to take off our shoes. Oh wow. White marble. Wow, that's big. That's actually one of the biggest ones I've seen. Every other one's been a lot smaller. This one's actually wider. Usually they're thinner, just like very tight. This one's really wide and it also has on top another stone, right? Wow, and in the room that he's in, it's like beautiful gold and blue. Like really, really nice, the Quran as well. So right outside of the mausoleum, there's this like cave system and he's telling me people come here and they pray. Wow, I mean, and it's really cool in here. Compared to outside, it's like, this is just dropped 20 degrees. Outside's 100, this is like, I would say even less. I'd say like 70, it got really chilly. I wanna stay here for five minutes. All right guys, so we had such an incredible afternoon. We started off with a delicious, enormous lunch. We had two different lambs, lamb kebab, fried lamb. We had like five salads. They were all so mouth-watering. We had some bread and we had some incredible wine. Then after that, we came and explored Termes. We saw two ancient Buddhist monasteries. Then after, we came to this mausoleum to one of the most important figures in Islam. And I gotta say, this afternoon has been incredible, except it's been really hot. <laughs> it's like really, really boiling. Do not come here in June or July. You will toast. Well, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Where have you been?
Good afternoon, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in beautiful Termez, Uzbekistan, the southernmost city in Uzbekistan, right on the border with Afghanistan. And this city is famous because it is the beginning of the Silk Road in this country. And where we are today, we're at a silk factory. So today we're going to go inside and see some women weaving silk. They make rugs, they make t-shirts, they make scarves. And then after this, we're going to go eat some delicious Uzbekistani food. Uzbek food is so good. We got meat, got soups, got salads. We got no plov, but that's good. Plov is usually for lunch. All right, let's go inside. Where are we? Yo, this, oh, this is for real. Okay, so I've seen this in China. So you actually have the silk. Yeah, and then they actually pull it. Okay, cool. Oh my god, so there's so many different steps here. Whoa. The silk is boiled, after that it, it comes through here. Uh, the guys are bringing and putting it over here. As you see right now, it's boiled, and after that, the machine helps you to get one of the uh, fiber from one token. And as you see it's here, it's silk. The machine gives you to, to cut one fiber and it's over here. And it goes like this. This machine will take one of the silk from over here and rope it from each one. As you see it over here. From one silk, we will get one kilometer of uh, silk fiber. So this is a huge, huge factory. They have over 1,200 1, rolls. Each one is eight kilometers. So every day, over 8,000, roughly like 10,000 kilometers, 10,000 kilometers of silk are, are produced. Yeah. Wow. In one month, we have 10,000 10 tons of Fibers. 10 tons? Yeah. Oh one. my god. I mean, the process here is a little different than the one I see in China. China's a little different. This one, you guys do the boiling here, and the women put it there, and then the, the machine keeps going and going and going. The one I see in China is a little different than the cocoon will be there alone, and when it finishes, it's finished. A little different. But yeah, I mean, it's huge. I've never seen a factory like this. And it's funny because during my time so far in Uzbekistan, I've only seen silk factories where they're weaving. I haven't seen the silk being produced. Yeah, I First time. So you had a chance to come to Termas and you, you will see this. I know, I know. Silk Road, guys, you have to come. Once they're done collecting eight kilometers of silk, they come over here, they're washed, then they're dried. The old silk fibers, the silk cocoons are grown in uh, villages. First step, they, they are grown from the villages to our warehouses, we put on the warehouses, we dry them over there, and after that, we brought, we bring them to this place. Our girls are collect them and sort them. There is, there are some uh, waste, and uh, you see, uh, they, they are twin cocoons. They are separating them. They are cleaning, and as you see, there is a waste box. They are throwing, uh, throwing out the waste and a uh, good one is going to the sack and they, they, they are going to the factory. Perfect. So all, so all the silk comes from different villages from the, around the area. They bring them over here, they basically dry them, right? Yeah. Then they bring them over here and, and these ladies go through them and get rid of the bad ones. So literally one by one getting rid of the waste. As you can see, some of these are really, really bad. Can I see a, a one that's a waste? Yeah, so this is waste. Why is it waste? How do you know? As you see, this is so, twin. Ah, so it's twin. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So that's why it's waste. Rama, 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 yeah! It is hot. So once they're done washing and then drying the rolls, they'll bring them over here, right, to this area. Over here, what they do is they grab five of them, five per, like, area. So five, 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 five. And then they combine those five together. So each one is eight kilometers. So they combine five, that's 40 kilometers, 40 kilometers of silk in one big band. What? That is crazy. And look, let's get close. So the ladies, what they do is they grab them and they make them catch one, like she's doing right here, and then it starts. The whole process starts again. And over and over and over. Five rows equals one of these. So this one has one, two, three, four, five. So it's actually, what is that? 200 kilometers of silk in each one of these right now. We just finished these. Look at these. They're so beautiful. It's so much silk. It's crazy. This is the end place. 
they are preparing this, the, the steel fibers to export, for exporting. Wow. Wow, my man. Preparation starts from here. Okay. Each, each uh, silk fiber works tightly and girls are, as you see, the, their job. They are cleaning from the waste. Uh, each fibers are cleaned and they collect about five pieces uh, together. And then uh, they will uh, roll them, as, as, as you see, uh, screw them, screw them. And then they will press it and after that they will put onto the spatial papers as you see over here uh, fiber they will be marked and it's ready to export so once we're done seeing how they take apart the silk from the cocoon you know they clean it they roll it i mean they get it ready for the whole export now we're going to go over to see the shop so they have a shop they don't actually weave any of the silk here but they do have you know the, the products that they do produce they, they send it to other shops, they produce it, and they send it back here and they sell it, correct? 100% correct. Perfect. Yeah, and they have more than just rugs. They have rugs, they have t-shirts, they have scarves. They have basically everything you can buy that is made out of silk. I'm sure you don't have bed, bed, uh, bed covers. Okay, so this shop has a lot of things, a lot of stuff. I mean, mostly for women. So unfortunately for me, I'm not buying anything, but I'm gonna buy some stuff for my wife. So right over here, they have scarves, right? So you were telling me these scarves cost 8,500? No, 100,000 sum. 100,000 sum? Yeah, 100,000. 100,000 sum. 100,000 sum is exactly like 10 US dollars, a little more like $10.50, but they're beautiful. Wow. My friend here was telling me that you, if you see this like in Turkey, they'll be selling it for like 50 euros. And that is true because I've never seen it this affordable in my life. But that's not Uzbekistan, that's Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's buy that for my wife. I'm buying her four. Buying her four and uh, that came out to 40 US. A great deal, look at these colors. Wow. All right guys, so that's it. Now we're going to dinner. Are we gonna eat some more Uzbek food? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that the sun has gone down, the temperature has dropped easily 20 some degrees. It's not that hot anymore. It's just, it's just like the desert, right? So in the desert, during the day it's scorching, at night it's really cold, like really cold. I've slept in the desert twice, and it really drops a lot. <sighs> Thank God it's, it's cool right now. So we're going to where? Restaurant Dubai? Yeah, it's called Dubai. Restaurant Dubai. Dubai. They have Uzbek food, but they also have other food. I'm only going with Uzbek food. Uzbek all the way. If you guys didn't know, Uzbekistan is not a country that has street food. Uzbekistan is all about food in restaurants, local restaurants, bigger restaurants, they have a mix. We're here. Yeah, we are near the Dubai restaurant. Okay, Dubai restaurant, here it is. Whoa, what a building. And it's a terrace upstairs? Terrace? Looks nice. Oh man, what a day it's been, huh? My body's on fire. So we made it here to Dubai restaurant and we came to the top to the terrace. As you can see, I mean, we have a, a bit of a mix here because I'm here with my friends from the tourism board down here. And we're starting off with some delicious vodka. Who's back vodka? Let's cheers, cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. 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 <laughs> Woo, spasiva. <laughs> so tonight we're getting, we're getting like a few different soups and salads. That's the, like the national food they have here. We also have a nice piece of bread right here. I love the bread here in Uzbekistan. What I usually do is I just get a little bit, right? Delicious bread, always like this, very fluffy. And then here he puts some of the some beef right here, some yummy beef. I mean, I'm gonna start off with a little bit of beef. I really wanna eat the soup though. Here we go. It's ridiculously tender. Mm. It's super juicy. I love putting it in with the bread because you make it your own little, little Uzbek sandwich. And it's super fresh, all natural. Mm. The beef in this country is ridiculous. Hey friend, where's the vodka? I'm making a lot of friends here from Uzbekistan. Oh, I love, love the vodka out of here. I'm not a big vodka guy, but it's actually one of the best things for you in terms of alcohol. It's very lean. It doesn't get you fat. Salute! <laughs> oh. Woo. In case you guys don't know, Uzbekistan is famous for their watermelons. And here we have some watermelon juice. 
<laughs> Dude, it's pure. It is pure watermelon. The first soup we're starting with is called galupsi. So basically, it's sweet pepper stuffed with rice and beef. And look at that. Whoa, look how monstrous this is. What a delicious sweet pepper. This is so similar to Greece. I mean, it just looks exactly the same. It just looks so mouth-watering. So I'm just gonna get a little piece of this. What? Mmm. Mmm. Oh, delicious. Mmm. I love the broth. So good and rich in flavor. And I love how the mix, the meat and the rice. Mm. Oh wow. Wow, look at that. Look at that amount there. This is crazy. Mm. Oh man. This is so good. Old duck. 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 <laughs> Next up we have yeah, big terma, which is basically a soup with boiled meat that has been boiled for eight hours. Look at this. It's like crazy. Lots of meat, lots of fat. Wow. And it's super hot, right? Mm. Oh, wow, it's another delicious vegetable broth. The flavor is amazing. Mm. Alright, I gotta say, this is my favorite soup so far in Uzbekistan. It's straight meat and fat. And that's it. And there's a little bit of like peppers in there. Wow, it's like lots of like just fat rolling around. Mm, this beef is it's mouth watering. Mm. Why is it so good? Why? Bakterma. Okay, so now we have another two incredible salads. These salads, um, you know, this is typical Uzbek, right? Lots of meat, always. This one has some peas, that's the biggest difference. This one has sausage, tomato, and this one has meat and cucumber. So, meat, cucumber, peas, sausage, tomato, and more meat. We got a little bit of this. So I'm gonna try first the one with peas. I love peas. So good. A little hard to get. Gotta dive in here. Mmm. Mmm. Super refreshing. A little oily. And this one actually has very little meat. I have little dices of meat. I love it these sides don't have like crazy sauces. They're not like, you know, Caesar. Next up the one with the beef and the sausage and tomatoes. Mm. Oh wow. This is too good guys. This is too good. Such a delicious combination. So next up we got norin, which is basically horse meat with wheat pasta. Yeah, it's, it's almost like pasta. Oh my God. The norin is too good. Beautiful. Horse meat is super gamey. And actually, I tried this before in Tashkent and I thought it tasted more like cheese, but it's not. You know, it does taste more like pasta. Mmm. No rain. So good. I don't know how to tell you how delicious that was. Straight up horse pasta. Wow. And next up we have chickpeas with beef, right? So basically that's it. Mmm. Mmm. Super tender beef. This also has a broth, so you had to go in and get some of that broth. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Get, bro, what the what is this? Like straight fat. So for the fat, it's gotta break up some fat. Oh my god. I don't even know how they eat this much fat. Hello, Bob. Goodbye. <laughs> 
Dai! 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 <laughs> prost, prost! Ant mai dai! Ancora! <laughs> all right, all right. So we had an incredible afternoon. We started off in the silk factory, not silk weaving, the silk factory. We saw how silk was processed from the cocoon. They pull off the silk, and then eventually they get it all the way through, and they make these huge bands, right? And then they either ship it off or export, or they send it somewhere around here, and they make actual product like scarves, t-shirts, you know, rugs so many different things and then after that we came here to have a delicious incredible meal gotta say that my favorite thing was this horse meat with like this horse pasta so good with the vodka this guy's wild and if you guys didn't know we're on the silk road you know alexander the great came through here marco polo came through here so many historical figures in history obviously so many like super important figures in history came here you guys have to come i mean the silk road it's a must visit well i hope you love this video if you did, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Ordek. 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 Good morning everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Jakurgan, Uzbekistan. This town is located about a 30 minute drive from Dermes. And the reason we came here today is because this place is famous for their crafts and their food. We're first starting it off right here at a craft center. We're gonna see how they make some crafts as well as seeing some folklore music and dance. Then after that, we're gonna go eat some delicious, delicious lamb tandoori. They say this is the best food in the region. And then we're gonna go see a famous minaret. Are you guys ready? Let's go explore Jakurgan. Rahan, are you ready? Yes, hello. David, how are you? Are you ready to start the day with me? Yes, I'm Please ready. Enjoy Jakurgan. <laughs> the best place for embroidery and collections of the Sazanis and traditional Uzbek clothes peculiar to this region. You will see wow girls. She's greeting and welcoming you with the with bread, this traditional way of greeting and she wishes you have um, to be dear, as dear as the bread, as sweet as the bread. Okay, so let me grab a piece of bread, so I just pick a piece, right? Yes, please. Okay. Means you are already a part of our society mm. today. That's so how the people in this area would greet you when you come mm -hmm. into their home? Yeah. <laughs> So as you can see, each one of these ladies has a different embroidery, different necklaces, different headgear. And the reason is because this would tell you, you know, where they are in life. So this lady right here, obviously white, she's a bride. The next one is the next day. So she's already, um, you know, she's already been married. Then this wo woman already has kids. Mm -hmm. Then she's like, you know, elderly lady. And this one's like the great, great grandmother, right? Mm -hmm. So, but each one also, you know, the clothing, like the embroidery is very different. different yeah. 
And then the necklaces, each one tells you something different as well, right? Yes, of course. Because uh, uh, we have uh, kind of uh, different uh, jewelry peculiar to the brides, peculiar to the aged women or, you know. Uh, Their men wear sala, right? Sala? Sala. So I'm going to try sala. Okay, okay, let's do it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't fit. Voila. Good? I like it, I like it, I like it. Amir. 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 Okay, they're gonna teach me how to dance the local way. Rahmat, 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 Rahmat. <laughs> Super soft. Rahmat. Oh. She's amazing, she's amazing. So once you're done seeing the show, I highly recommend buying some gifts here, right? So they have all these different crafts. So they have, you know, carpets, some, uh, some clothing. They also have these, which are really cool. These are like the Christmas trees, right? And the thing is here, because there's no middleman, you get the best price. And the way it works here is that they produce, um, you know, the material, and then they give it to their like, you know, their students, because they have students that make this at home. So they make all these at home. So besides this, they also have like small little purses. This is like cute for like little girls, right? So I think I'm gonna take three of these. For my two dollars and my niece. Fifty. Yeah, fifty for a piece. Okay, that's that's still a good deal. I don't think it's bad. Handmade, right? I am so excited. They say this is the best lamb. lamb. Yeah, the best lamb tandoori in the region, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to see him put it into the tandoori. Yeah. Oh, some salad, maybe some vodka. Perhaps. <laughs> no vodka. No vodka. No, no vodka. tandoori. <laughs> wow, we're here. Beautiful. So, this is somebody's house or is this like a restaurant? Kakistan. Oh, I can smell the lamb. Lamb. Oh, it's everywhere. It's so good, man. Do you smell? I smell it. I love it. It's my favorite. We came here for one reason, and that's to eat lamb tandoor. The famous lamb tandoor for this region. We're going all the way into the back to the tandoor. Where is it? What's that? Follow us. Yeah. Wow. And right there is the tandoor. They will burn like this and they make it hot. And after that, they will put inside the meat and they will cover with, the, with this dish and they will cover with the mud also. So the way it works here in the kitchen is they start off by getting the meat and they salt it. They salt it for 30 minutes. So they leave it there sitting for 30 minutes. Then after that, they put it into the tandoor. So they slowly put two like layers, right? So uh, they put the legs, two layers of legs, then they put a big piece of meat and fat on top. So they seal it with a big tandoor, right? They put it on top and then they put mud all around. So they seal it with mud. So it's really, really like in there cooking. Once it's all done, they wait 80 minutes. And then after 80 minutes, they open the tandoor and then they pull out all the meat. So it's like a variety, a mix of like, you know, organs. So they got like kidney, liver, they got legs, they got fat, they got flesh, they have shoulder. I mean, you name it, they got it. Oh, I can't wait to try this food. So follow me, David. Now that we're done seeing how they cook it, let's go eat some delicious lamb. Wow. And they're cutting it right here, right at the window. They cut it and then the waiters grab it and bring it to your table. Oh. Smell it. It's just like the aroma of delicious. Oh my god, so juicy this lamb This is probably the only place in the world where you're gonna see the lamb being made in a tandoor just like that And before we eat the lamb, we're gonna start off with a delicious, you know, super freshing salad And this is just tomatoes got some cucumbers. You got here the sour cream, right? Best tomatoes in the world. Uzbekistan I actually like the mix. Sour cream with tomatoes. 
And next up we have some bread, right? To get the bread, go into the sour cream. Mm. It's more like sour yogurt. That's more of the feeling, you know? It's a little thicker, but it's really sour. Yeah, always eat like locals. Mm. Basically, this whets your appetite. It really gets you ready for the lamb. So the lamb is gonna be, you know, eating like a very gamey meat. And this is like super, I guess it gets it coats your stomach a little bit, right? And here we have our incredible lamb feast. Look at this. It's not just a piece of lamb. It's ribs, organs, liver, fat. What else do we have here? Everything. You already told him everything. Basically everything? everything? And some spices. Some spices? Yeah. So what she's telling me is that here, you don't need a fork. You just put your hand in and grab something. So I'm gonna grab a rib. Wow. Wow. Juicy. Super juicy. <laughs> Look at this. Whoa, Amir David. Wow, dude, the flesh is falling off the bone. Mm. This is like the best lamb rib I've ever had in my life. And I have the paparazzi here. Mm. Wow. I mean, it's mouth watering. It's like. So easy. Well, I can't stand it. You can't wait, right? What else can I grab? Is an organ here? What's this? Kid kidney. That's some damn good kidney. <laughs> it's so delicious. It's a little dense. Kidneys uh, taste very similar to liver. Very similar. That's the same thing. You know, organ. Mm. I love this way you guys eat. You're sharing with this. And this is a liver, right? This is a huge liver. Big piece. Very dense. my favorite. Liver's a very dense organ, but it's very similar in every single animal. So you eat beef liver, chicken liver, lamb liver, almost the same. But they're all like, they're all like falling apart. The meat, the organ, mm. So they're saying I gotta get some bread with the fat, mix it together, make it like a sandwich, right? This is actually how we do it in Italy. I've had some of the best lamb of my life in Uzbekistan, but this is number one. Number one in Uzbekistan. <laughs> it's like chocolate. What else do I grab in here? More, this is more. The fat's the ultimate fat. Taking the flesh from the bone. This is lamb heaven. This is really outstanding food. So I don't know what else to get, but they gave me this one right here. So this one's like a mix. It's like a lot of fat right there, and we have also a bunch of flesh. It's a different piece. And it tastes the difference in the meat. The fat is incredible though. And the crunch outside, I'm in awe. This is truly an experience. And the price for this, I think it's uh, so it's 11 US dollars for one kilo. And we got two and a half, right? Something like that. If I had this in Miami, this fresh, you know, farm the table, I would eat it once a week, minimum. So it's a mix of fat and flesh as well, but the rib always tastes so different. Mm. On the outside, the burnt crispy part, the skin, tastes like pork rinds. Mmm, very crunchy. Oh, so fatty. This is why you come to the city for this. Obviously, you go see the cultural experience with the food. How is this good? I might have a little bit of a kidney. Mm. They were saying that we have to eat this fast because you have to eat it when it's hot. When it gets too cold, it won't be as good. I personally love the organs the most. Organs, kidneys, liver. Right here we have the liver. The textures are unreal, Di dense, mm. really earthy. Whenever you finish any meal here in Uzbekistan, you'll have to always finish it off with some tea. This helps you digest. Mm, delicious, mountain tea. I'm usually like an espresso guy, I love coffee, but here, I can do this all day. Rahmat, Rahmat, ah, oh, ah. Oh. 
Thanks guys, best lamb on the planet. The best lamb in Uzbekistan for sure. This is the best. The next destination is Jarkurgan Minaret where we go and if you want you have chance to climb up, climb it up. Oh can I? Yeah, and you can see all the landscape of Jarkurgan. Wow. And you were saying this is the oldest, the oldest minaret in Central Asia? Yes, it is the oldest minaret in Central Asia. But our minaret is fascinating. Its design is not repeated anywhere. I mean the style of it, architectural style. Quick 10 minute drive and we're here. Wow, the oldest minaret in Central Asia. It's gorgeous. So the name of it is Jar Kurgan Minaret. So the year of its construction is 1107-1109. There was a very nice king in the 12th century. His name was Sultan Sanjar. So the, he was the emperor of the Seljukids empire. So he had a very, very skillful architect. His name was Muhammad Ali Serakhshi from Serakhsh. So this is in modern Iraq. Uh, he built lots of really nice complexes for Sultan Sanjar. So this is one example, I mean the minaret. So around the minaret there was a very big mosque which was uh, destroyed. All that's left is the minaret. We can climb the minaret, correct? Yes. Wow, okay, so let's do it. So now this minaret is 22 and a half meters. This is a 12th century stairway. Oh, it's super steep. We have to bring our phones, obviously, so we can have some light in here. Oh, this, man, these are tiny stairs. Tiny. How, how many steps is this? I mean, it's not so high. I think I've done a few hundred of these, so I'm good to go. <laughs> I've really done a lot. I did just like on this trip, I did like 10. Oh. Oh. oh my god, that was so intense. Oh wow. Jakurgan. When you come up to the top of Jakurgan Minaret, you get epic views of the area. As you can see, this is the tallest structure in the entire vicinity, right? So you have like houses, trees, basically all farmland. Bunch of cows, watermelons, lots of fruit. And yet today we had an incredible experience here in Jakurgan. We started off at the craft center. You know, the ladies showed us basically how they would embrace people in the past, especially during a wedding. You know, they had amazing embroidery. They danced, they played music. I even tried on some clothes. I bought some gifts. And I suggest when you come to places like this, when you can buy stuff directly from the source, you buy. Always buy stuff that's made with love, craft, you know, craft things are, are the best. I mean, in terms of souvenirs, don't buy magnets and stuff. Personally, I suggest stuff like this, you know, something you can keep forever. And then, yeah, after that, we had probably the best lamb in Uzbekistan, so freaking good. Every single part of the lamb was so delicious. The liver, the kidney, you know, all the organs, the, the leg, wow, I mean, the fat was so freaking amazing. And going to the back and seeing how they do it, you know, seeing them salt it, then, you know, they, they heat up the, the oven all the way up to tandoor, they put it in, they close it, they close it with mud, then they open it, and then it's just like, the smell was just so amazing. The aroma blew my, like, my taste buds out, you know, like crazy. And then, yeah, after that we came here, you know, to the oldest minaret in Central Asia. So next time you're in Uzbekistan, I highly recommend coming down to Termes and then coming over to Jakurgan. It's only a 30 minute drive. And guys, if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Peace. everyone this is David Hoffman from David's been here in beautiful really hot Termes Uzbekistan the southernmost city in Uzbekistan right on the border with Afghanistan today I'm gonna to take you around to see some historical sites and then we're gonna go on a Somsa tour I'm so excited we're gonna start our first with a mausoleum then after that we're gonna go see a fortress and we're gonna eat various different Somsas are you guys ready we're gonna start off right here at this place this is a mausoleum my friend what do we know about this one of the highlights of Tibet, we talked about that memorial complex which was dealt in 700 years from the 11th up to the mid 17th century. It's a very beautiful place where you can see 
really beautiful brickwork. This is really amazing. Wow. Of course. Look yeah. at the ceiling. How beautiful it is. Only in Jarkurgan Minaret and here you can see this design. Yeah. If you remember. The designs with the bricks. Yes. It's like a rib pyramid design. design? Rib, rib design, rib, rib design. design. Wow. On the right hand side. So it was made from the pieces of fired brick. So 11th, 12th century, it is still Islamic period. Nevertheless, architects tried to use lots of symbolics from different religions. For example, this is Zoroastrian symbol, meaning heavens, human being, and hell. Or four parts of the nature, oh sorry, four elements of the nature, and human being is right in the middle. This is on Buddhas. Okay, so for me, what I love the most about this place is really the colors, the work of art. This, so these tiles, as you can see, it's like flowers, it looks like stars, it's a lot of blue, a lot of like aqua, and the reason why they love blue is because Amir Timur loved that color. That's why every single palace, basically in Uzbekistan, palace, mosque, they always have blue. He didn't do red, always blue, and it, some people have told me that it's more because he thought because of the sky, Right, so because the sky, he really liked, you know, that and made really, it really made all the palaces look beautiful. As you can see, I mean, it is gorgeous, and I really like the yellow here. That really like pops a little bit more. And then in between, where are these? Like these right here? Do you know why they have this stuff? Those Russians, Zoroastrian symbols. Okay, yeah, because they're like they literally had to cut the brick and put it in between. Wow. Well, let me show you a galaxy. The, the dome which completely looks like galaxy. Well, now we are in the Sultan Saadat. This is mausoleum. This part is the earliest one, developed in 11th, 12th, early 13th centuries AD. Even Genghis Khan, when he destroyed Temez, he didn't touch this complex because of the people who were buried here, very influential dynasty of the Sayyids who are coming from especially from our prophets, well, from Ali's family. In this room, it's over 24 graves. The main one uh, was Amir al Hussein, who was the founder of this dynasty in Central Asia. Wow, this is amazing. I haven't been to a, like, a crypt like this, like a Muslim. Mm -hmm. This is, wow, so many, and they're really old, over 800 years just sitting here. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. That's, that's really just like insane how this has stood the test of time. And no one destroyed it because usually in like you know most places i don't know you live at italy and all these places yeah. things get just destroyed with you know all these different world war ii alone destroyed everything you know yeah. so prophet muhammad had a daughter her name was fatima she married ali they had two boys and they eventually had a dynasty which is called the Said dynasty right and then they eventually you know moved from iran all the way up to this area and then you know obviously they passed away here and this is where they're buried uh, we have Kirkus, Forty Maidens Palace or what? Fortress. Okay, and what is that? Exactly. Just a palace, it's, a fortress? Well, this is a kind of controversial topic to discuss if it was a palace or fortress or harem. They don't know what it is exactly, but it could be a palace or fortress, but it was 40 different women lived there, right? That's what you said. It's a local legend. I mean, to me, it looks like a fortress. For me, that's a fortress, right? Similar. <laughs> I mean, it's like a walled complex, right? So this complex had been researched several times by different archaeologists. So uh, for the first time, Strelkov uh, made kind of research in the place and he said, oh, it should be Caravansaray. But a bit later, there was a very um, outstanding archaeologist, Pugachenko, or Galina Anatolievna. She studied the place and said, okay, it's, perhaps it was a Hanaka like a hotel for dervishes. A bit later, Edward Vasil Tveladze, another archaeologist, he made his own version about the place, saying, oh, it, it was a big a residence of Samanit's governors in Termes. So in 2016, up to now, we did re uh, excavations in the complex. So Tukhta Shanaib, his local archaeologist, he did some research. And what was really strange, he found out the cultural layer of the 15th century. The whole complex is 11th century, but still we don't know its function. So Anaib says, OK, perhaps it was a residence uh, of the governors in Termes, 
but how about period of Ulugbek? So he says, okay, Ulugbek, as well as his grandfather Timur, really loved uh, building complexes. So he saw abandoned complex and just wanted to restore it and use it. That's all about the complex. How about 40 girls? So um, 40 girls, uh, we have local folklore describing the place as a huge academy of like uh, for girls you know a, a huge school for ladies as legend says there was a very beautiful and very gifted princess her name was Gloy. so once she gathered 40 uh, servants from the parents palaces and brought them to the complex and opened a school where she taught ladies in, to religion you know uh, to islam to arabic inscriptions and so on so this is a legend. So right here we have the wish tree. So people come here, women come here, <laughs> and they tie something up. It can be a scarf, a tissue, and basically they, they do that so that you know, God provides them with you know, a husband, a child. So this residency has 15 rooms that have been discovered, and they all have huge hallways like this, but most of the building is in ruins. As you can see, everything is falling apart. Slowly it's falling apart. I mean, this is like straight mud right here, right? mud and this was like a big staircase Ooh, wow and that is closed off huh mm -hmm. it probably it was another room though it looks yeah, like it could have been the end. is it the end oh, yeah. okay so basically whoever lived here had a lot of money because a huge residency there's almost nothing else like this in the area it's the only one found the you know the grandeur of it everything's so large the rooms the, the hallways i know the towers yeah they had to have towers to protect from invaders because whoever wanted to come into this house is going to take everything <laughs> we have finished the historical part of the tour now we're going to go eat some somsas there's a variation of somsa that, like each spot has its own somsa literally one somsa per little restaurant Okay, we're stopping here on the side of the road to buy some watermelon. Like I said before, this place is king for the watermelon. Watermelon is everywhere. Whoa. This is okay, it's okay. Wow. It's 12,000 for one small one. We negotiated, we're getting two for 20. So roughly two dollars. Two US dollars for two of these. So that's 1,000, nope. It's 10,000, 10,000. Okay, so I pay, I pay. It's okay, I pay. What? For myself. No. No. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. Wow. High time to eat. <laughs> I'm so excited to eat the watermelon. The watermelon here is so juicy. So much water. Let's go eat some melon. <laughs> So basically we're here next to my hotel, Silk Word Hotel, and <laughs> out of nowhere there's a wedding and these guys are the band, right? Yeah, the, mostly they greeting the guests. Okay, yeah, because this happened to us when we went to Samarkand and to Kiva, like everywhere we'd get to, there was people like this, like, yeah, it's you know? Greeting. Yeah. It's amazing. This is Alisher Nawai, he's the poetry person. He wrote a lot of uh, poems and he is the first person who brought uh, Uzbek language to our country. Now let's go eat some samsas. We have two special uh, places for samsa. One of, one of them is Deno and the second one is Sina samsa. And right now we are going to visit the uh, first place. Uh, it's called Sina samsa. Let's go eat samsas. So delicious. It's like a samosa, empanada. It's amazing. Perfect. So we're going to see how they bake it. So right now it's in this tandoor, right? So they bake it. And this one's empty, right? So it's just this one. So in five minutes, we're gonna see them pull it out. Oh. Wow.
And here we go, the Sina Somsa. And if you guys are wondering what Sina means, it's actually the town where these guys are from. So they came here to Termes and they brought their recipe. So basically it's beef with lamb fat inside, like lamb juices, and then they bake it. And what he was saying is that they have to open it like this and then you eat with a spoon. So you get a little bit, right? Mm. Oh man, the onions. Oh, okay, what is this? Amazing. So I mean basically the onions are a little crispy. Nice juicy fat with beef. It's it's like you feel the lamb because you feel like fat of the lamb, but it's nice and beefy. Mm. And this? Tomato sauce. So what do you do? You're supposed to do this? Mm-hmm. Like some of that? You got it. Like some beef? Close it. Crunchy. Mm. Mm. The tomato sauce with this is incredible. This is an outstanding shum sauce. Mm. I think the best part about this is this tomato sauce. Mm. It's a little spicy. Woo! A little spicy. <laughs> oh. This is basically like a like a tomato juice in Spain. Whoa, and I'm still right next to the ten doors, so it's still really hot. And I love how, how this is baked. You see the dough? So as you can see, the crust, it's like a, it's like a crunchy crust on the outside, a little dough in the middle, and you have all the fat, like all the juices from the lamb throughout. And you still have some, some of the beef and some of the onions stuck. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some of this on top. Whoa, nice and fatty, juicy meat. Some of that. Straight to the mouth, guys. The spicy tomato sauce is killing us. Mmm. Now, the sauce is incredible, but having that tomato sauce, oh, with the spices. Mm. This is one of the best sauces I've had. I've had literally samsa every day. This is one of the best. <laughs> Rahmat. Thank you so much. Rahmat. We just took like a five minute drive and we're here. I hope they're still baking one. Oh, this place is like more like jamming. What is this? So here at Deno Somsa, they literally just put the Somsas into the tandoor. We have to wait roughly 20 minutes, but the best part about where they're located is that it's like an open air food core or like food area, right? So there's lots of different vendors. One of them selling kebabs, there's some selling drinks. There's actually like some birds in the middle here. And over here they're selling beer. So you know what? I deserve a beer because I worked really hard the past two weeks. What beer do they have? Sarbas. No, I want, I want, a, I want a dark beer, strong beer. What do they have? Strong beer. Tonight I'm gonna try a local beer. It's called Kibrai. It's light. It's not so strong. Pretty light. And he's saying, you know, one thing I've tried already a few times is he's like, these are like yogurt sticks or cheese sticks, right? Yogurt. Yeah. It's like, it's like a super dense, chalky flavor. I mean, it does look good with it, pretty well. So the beer costs 35 US cents. Next up, I'm trying Sarbas, the national beer. I don't know, this is a little weedy. We're back here at the Somsas and he's about to take them out. I mean, it looks so good. Like you see them, they're like gushing out some juices. Oh, they're baked to perfection. Oh my God, I can't wait to try this one, man. This is gonna be good, right? So you guys know I'm in Termes. Terme is in the state of Suandaria, which is the southernmost state. And Dino, this is from Dino region. So that's one of the 12 regions within this state. Woo! This looks good. 
They're very crunchy, very buttery. Now I gotta dip some of this. Just bathe it in this. Love it. Gaspacho. Tomatoes in Uzbekistan are really amazing. The best in the world. And I love how they mix this. So there's a lot of veggies in there. A little bit of chili. I haven't had any chilies at all, like nothing spicy. These are made them spicy. Onions, more beef. Gotta throw some of that gazpacho inside. Tomato, tomato sauce. Mmm. I love a samosa. I really do. It's like the ultimate empanada. I love that it's not deep fried. Doing it tandoori is the best thing in the world. Baking it. The juicy beef. Also juicy tomato, like it's bursting out. Mmm, a little spicy, crunchy, buttery. Bam. Oh, Rahmat, 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 Rahmat. <laughs> Before we leave, we're going to the back to see how they make the songs, how they put them together. Okay, here we go. Whoa, where are we? Woo! What is this? We saw how they make the som sauce. We actually went to the back and saw they put it together. So basically all they did was they flattened the dough, flattened it, then the guy would go in and throw beef inside, turn it into this nice somsa, very, very thick. I mean, he filled it up to like, you know, so it's like extremely thick. And after that, the lady would put it onto a board and she'd like literally drizzle butter all over it and then they throw it into tandoor. And that's how they make these samosas. I mean, it's really delicious. Very different from samosa and empanada, completely different. Samosa and empanada are always, always fried, like 100%. Super delicious, oh, so good. And yeah, I mean, before we did that, we started off with an incredible, like, historical tour. You know, we saw the mausoleum, then we went and we saw, like, this ancient, I guess, like, a residence. They don't really know exactly. It's like a fortress slash palace. And then we got some watermelon, we saw, you know, a wedding, you know, the ceremony starting the wedding, you know, when you get into the wedding, that's how they open up. They, you know, they greet you with all these like trumpets, pretty amazing. And then delicious psalm size. Gotta say, maybe the first one, my favorite, because I really, really enjoyed it, like really hot with some of that gazpacho, tomato, spicy tomato sauce on top. Oh, so good. Well, guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. Next time you come to Uzbekistan, definitely come to Termes. Where have you been? Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing great. This is David Hoffman from David's Bin here in Termes, Uzbekistan's southernmost city. And today I'm gonna to take you to have some like mix of Uzbek slash Russian breakfast. If you guys don't know, in Uzbekistan, it's not a big breakfast culture. It's basically like bread, butter, and tea. That's it. So today I'm gonna to take you here to Cafe Bistro. And Cafe Bistro is a mix, right? So we're gonna have some Russian stuff, some Uzbek stuff. I don't really know what to expect, but then after this, we're gonna explore a little bit of Termes, go get my bags at the hotel, and then fly back to Tashkent and have a flight literally in four hours. So we have a tight schedule, but we're gonna make it work. Are you guys ready? Let's go eat some delicious breakfast here in Uzbekistan. Follow me. Otto. Yes, sir. What's up, man? Good morning. Ready for this place? Yeah, sure. Let's let's try. It's the, your first time too, right? Yeah, I'm first time. <laughs> the, usually, I, I'm making my breakfast in my home. I mean, it's sweeter than going to another places because it's my, my mom making my breakfast. It's all mixed, bro. If if you see, there is a fried egg and sausages, and this is this is the chicken. I mean, and this is a samsa. What we, what we usually eat, macaron pasta, and this one, and this is a, a, a boiled rice and boiled chicken. So basically it's a buffet of a mix, right? So what's the most traditional in terms of Uzbek would be up here, the fried dough and also the somsa. The Russian stuff is more the chicken, the egg, the sausage, the pasta, you know, boiled, boiled chicken and also french fries. Uh, I think I'm gonna get like one of everything. Uh, what do you think? What do you What do you want? 
one of everything. No. And this one, what is this? It's uh, we called manne kasha. Instant coffee. Okay, great. Instant coffee. Got some bread. Then they have some tea, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Let's order some stuff. So here at Cafe Bistro, I decided to get a huge mix. So I got pasta, eggs, rice, onions, beef, ham, some grains. I don't know exactly what grains that is. I think this is oatmeal. I'm like 100% sure it's oatmeal, but they said there's like three different varieties here. I just got one of them. And then I got a somsa. And this somsa is a little different because it's not beef. It is pumpkin. So it's filled with pumpkin. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this one. It looks amazing. Really filling, really delicious. Mm-hmm. Pumpkin, super delicious pumpkin mash. With some onions as well. Mmm. I was surprised I hadn't seen any other somsas. Not in America, they have a variety. Here I've only seen the beef. This is the first one outside of the beef that I've tried. Mmm. This is great. So good. Pumpkin pie inside an empanada. Somsa pumpkin, somsa. Before I dive into the super hearty stuff, I'm gonna have some of the oatmeal. Mmm. Oh wow, super sweet. This is actually super watery. Very different from the oatmeal I have in America. I usually have it, have it like almost super dry with some peanut butter. Mmm. I mean, it's good. Mmm. The milk is sweet, sweet, sweet. Almost like cardamom. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna dip some bread in here. Oh, well, this bread's hard. Let it soak it up. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's Uzbek cereal. Mm. Crunching. Okay, so, lots of stuff here. So many things. I think I'm gonna start with the pasta. So it looks like onions. Onions and beef? Mm. Delicious penne pasta. Wow. All right, I'm gonna limit that. I don't love to have so many carbs in the morning. <laughs> some of the rice. Mmm. They actually drizzle some gravy on top. Mmm, delicious. Very earthy, that gravy. Like, almost like mushrooms. Over here, we got some beef. Nice tender strip of beef. Some onions. And what's next? This is like some grain, right? Here we have a nice egg. Mm. I personally like it when the yolk like pops. This one they cooked it a little too much so the yolk was like, you know, cooked completely. A little hard. And here we have huge, huge sausage. It's wild, bro. This is like what you eat in Russia. Mmm, it's good, but it's a little too big for me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mix everything a little bit. Rice, beef, this is like the ultimate mix. I won't lie to you, it's not my favorite breakfast. I'm just gonna eat a little more so I have enough food in me before I head out to the airport because I don't wanna get on a flight and be starving. Yeah, so as you can see, it's a big mix of everything. Beef, pasta, rice, greens. What meshes it all together is that gravy. Whatever gravy they put in it, it's great that you can just mix it in like that. Mix in some of that egg, right? Cut it up. Mix it in. Oh man, it's great. Mm. I personally can't eat any more that ham. That's a little bit of a bomb. Too much for me. This is not really my favorite breakfast at all. Uh, I really wouldn't eat any of this for breakfast, ever. I, for me, it's like eggs benedict or something super delicious. I, I'm not a big sweets person. I like more savory. But yeah, this is not this is not my type of thing. This is more Russian. Uh, but yeah, my favorite thing for sure was the coffee, instant coffee, can't go wrong with it. And yeah, I think we're gonna go now to a museum, the archaeological museum. And then, I mean, we, we literally have two hours to be at the airport, so I gotta like fly. All right, let me drink this fast. Let's go. Rahmat, 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 Rahmat. All right, now we're going to the Archaeological Museum of Termes. It's right here, right? Nearby? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, we show you. See you now, see you now. See you now. Thank you, man. At 
After a quick five minute drive, we're here at the Archaeological Museum of Termen. Oh man, this looks like a mosque. Beautiful. Ancient history, we got Greek here too. We got the Mac Macedonians. Macedonia, sir. Yeah, Alexander the Great. Wow, this building's awesome, man. It's Love it. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We've just entered the archaeological museum and a really cool fact is they opened this museum in 2002 on the 25th 100 year anniversary of Dermes. And here you can see archaeological finds from the region that date back between the Bronze Age up to the 15th century. So the region is called Sohandaria, Dermes is the capital. And here we actually have a map of the region. So here you see the river which divides Afghanistan with Uzbekistan. You have Termes, and then you go all the way up. There's Jarkurgan, which is where we went yesterday. Amazing land up there. Then you keep going and you start hitting up all the mountains. And over here, as you can see, incredible archaeological finds. Here we have like a piece of a pillar. What does this date back to? Well, so this is the white stone. This basically dates back to like a Macedonian time when Alexander the Great came through here. Over here we have some, some vase. I'm all about archaeology. I mean, I'm really into the history of every place I go to. Here's just more and more incredible finds. Wow, this is like a bath, huh? Yeah. This is a bath from the 4th century BC. So this is like Alexander the Great's time. People used to bathe in this. Whoa, this is just the best. Right here? And what's that? 11th century? Yeah. 11th century base. So who was here? It was, uh, which dynasty? So many. Too many, too many dynasties. <laughs> oh wow. Wow, it just keeps going. And then right here, we obviously have the gate that I saw yesterday, the Silk Road Gate, which basically was like where the country started, you know, whatever country was here at that time, right? Whichever dynasty or empire. You know, obviously it's gone through so much, uh, so many empires and, and dynasties throughout history. So whoever had it at that moment who built this, this was the entrance to the country and you had, you had to pay a tax to get in or pay a tax to cross down. So that's sort of how it worked, right? They always had gates along the Silk Road. And then we just keep going and way more stuff here. And right here we have, as you can see, the Quran. So this probably was part of a mosque, an ancient mosque. Pull the water in. As you see, it's flow down. Uh, what, what I show you in the file stepper, they found, mm -hmm. but they found it in that place. Yes. So basically it's like a fountain, a sacred pond actually, sacred pond. Wow, with the little lion right here. So much history in this part of the world. So many different civilizations have crossed through here. The crossroads of the world, basically, the Silk Road. Wow, how many more rooms do we have? A lot more. Whoa. Heading up to the second floor, and up here we have everything from the Bronze Age. This is, this is pretty, pretty amazing. Wow, Bronze Age period. So what do they got here? They have everything, I mean, tools. They so they have tools, they have weapons, lots of pottery, always pottery. That's, that's what you'll find the most from any point in history is everything they use to eat, right? To eat, to drink. What a massive, massive showcase. That is how many things they find here. So this area has been inhabited for like over 3,500 years. Whoa. Man, this is incredible. These are really nice with the paintings. Like it's actually some drawings. The other ones are just like plain. These have some drawings. So the bronze air and the first century and Bubrin Chasra. This is 1,000 years. Uh, Before Christ. Yeah. So 3,000. So 3,000 years ago. Mm. And this area right here is all about Alexander the Great, Alexander of Macedon. So if you're thinking how do they make these replica busts, is basically they saw the coins which are right here and they basically designed the bust from the coins. And if you guys didn't know about Alexander the Great and what he did, he's basically, he went from Macedonia all the way up through Central Asia and then went back down to India then finally ended up back in Babylon where he died. But everywhere he stopped, he left a general and he built a city, so slowly, making you know new cities new cities new cities most of them were called alexander alexandria is like the last one standing that's like a super famous city this is Camportepa. this is the city that alexander the great built so as you can see it's like a city on an island right that's where the rich people lived with the walls then you have obviously the water then here you had you know more of the city but these are like not as important people. And then outside of the wall, you have like the plebs or people in poverty. Unfortunately, during those times, how it was, you know, the rich stayed here, everybody else stayed here, middle class, and then everybody else outside the walls. And over here, 
the very far end. This is how a rich person's house would look. This museum is massive. As you can see, each one of these areas is a different century. But one of the coolest things I've seen here is this, look. This is basically ancient plumbing, ceramic water pipes right here. This is from the 10th century. So this is how they would bring water from the river all the way to their homes. Look at this, it's crazy. I can't believe they did this back then. Ancient water pipes. So you got a plumber in back in the day, I'm sure there was a plumber. He would come in and like put this in. <laughs> but look, I mean, it doesn't stop. You have so many different things. So you have small little details, right? So like, you know, jewelry, you know, bells, chains, you have coins, vases. Look at this, this is more ceramic work and this is all from the, what? The 9th and 12th century AD. Wow, beautiful stuff. Love it, love the colors, man. Really nice. And this, so have we seen this all around Uzbekistan, right? This is where you'd put the books, but this is actually from the 11th century. Look at this thing. Wow. And we were actually here yesterday. We went to that minute right yesterday. So, I mean, there's tons of stuff to see. I personally can't show you everything because if I did, it would take an, you know, an hour or two and this video would be way too long. But yeah, I mean, you have to come here when you come to Tehermes. If you really are into history, you should come here. And even if you aren't into history, you should come here just to like see what this place was about. Uh, I personally think learning about the history of any destination is the best way to understand what these people went through and why they are where they are today. I love how great the air conditioning was inside. It wasn't hot at all in there. It was like perfect. It was cold. It was air conditioner inside. It's super cold inside. Yeah, outside you're in inferno. Super hot Tehermes. Hottest place in Uzbekistan. <laughs> so we're going, we're going to a wedding now? What are we doing? As you wish. Oh my God, we're going to a wedding? Maybe I'll have one shot of vodka before I go to the airport. Oh, <laughs> you, you will have a good flight then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go. And here we are. What is this, man? This is like a wedding ceremony in this building? Yeah, it's called Afruz. This, this is like a Soviet building. Looks what? like it, Soviet. Let's see what this is about. I've never been to an Uzbek wedding. And the thing is in Uzbekistan is that they get married any day of the week. It's not Sunday or Saturday. It's any day of the week. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Okay, so right here, and this is like an amazing giant ballroom. As you see on the table, we serve like this. There, there are salads and masomsa, bread, fruits, chocolates, and pistachios. This, uh, this all for the for all guests. It's welcoming our guests, and it's totally free. You will you will come and enjoy the wedding, enjoy the food, and after that, there is a time to dance. You will see if you will have a time. We're here a little early actually because the wedding is going to start for another hour. It's just like guests are starting to arrive. They're starting to have like a like a, a brunch in a way. It's not breakfast. It's like almost like a lunch, you know? But yeah, I mean the food looks amazing. Bread and then yeah. So the, so the wedding party, as you can see, it's pretty massive. It's a huge ballroom. Really beautiful in here. But unfortunately, we won't actually see the dancing. We might just have some vodka. So we're gonna have some vodka. I mean, I just had some stuff. I think it's a little too early for vodka. It's only 11 in the morning, but I'll have one shot to like celebrate for him. He's in hot. Ordek, Ordek. Ordek, Ordek, Ordek. Oh, vodka at 11 in the morning. Oh, oh. Lines, bye, dry. Okay. Celebrate. Ordek, 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 Ordek. My friend, Odin. Oh, speak English. You drink, 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 drink. <laughs> Take off in literally 62 minutes, so we gotta go. We gotta go fast. That was really fun, actually. I, I wish we had like another hour here to like party with the, all the guests, but I mean, two shots, seeing the bride come in, you know, basically greet everybody, say hi to everybody. Pretty amazing. Uh, and this is how it is here in Uzbekistan. I mean, if you ever in Uzbekistan, you see a wedding, they'll let you in. They love foreigners. They always greet you. If you're hungry, if you want alcohol, no problem at all. But guys, that's it. Off to Tashkent. I mean, it took us like literally like five minutes to get here. Really, really quick. All right, my man. So we here we come to the airport. To the end. 
Yeah. My man. I think it's not the end. I will come to US. I will find there. Maybe okay. We'll go to Mitchell. Let's go, let's go. So this security is actually pretty easy to let both of us through. He shouldn't actually be through because he doesn't have a, a passport, but they know he's just dropping me off and guiding me all the way to the end. Yeah, beautiful day. Actually, isn't so hot today. Good breeze. Wow. Only a one hour flight to Tashkent. As soon as I entered, I have to go through security. You know, I had a little bit of a red fly because, you know, obviously I have batteries. So batteries in my backpack, batteries in my carry-on, but it's all good. I'm here to the counter. My flight takes off in literally 40 minutes, but it's perfect. Not that many people here. Very small airport. My back was actually a little overweight, 26 kilos, but the guy's like, don't worry, it's fine. Not that many people on this flight, so it's all good. Hey, Rahmat, Rahmat. Thank you. Have a good flight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, domestic departure? International. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Security here was super easy. I mean, really, really quick. They checked my bag, obviously, because of the batteries, but that was it. Made it here to the boarding area. As you can see, it's a pretty small room, really high ceilings. They have a second floor, so you can go up there and chill as well if you want to. Most people are here ready to board, and our plane just arrived. Everybody's disembarking right now. So it's not that small a plane, obviously, because it's like almost 200 people. But yeah, I mean, we're ready. Uh, we're supposed to take off in 23 minutes, so as soon as they're ready, we're probably gonna clean the plane really fast and then we're gonna board and take off. I mean, expect a little bit of delays always in Uzbekistan. Everything's a little delayed and they say, you know, 11, it's really like 11.30. So just be aware of that and it's fine. All right guys, let's board the plane. That's it, we made it 20 minutes, now we're boarding the flight. I'm 18F, 18F, so I have to go to the front, I think. Yeah, I'm going to the front. Let's do this, only one hour flight. So we just boarded the flight and this is a Boeing 757, a 3-3 configuration. It's only a one hour flight, it should be really, really fast. Actually it's less, they were saying like 45 minutes. Uh, you know, they, they say one hour, but that's usually between like getting on and getting off the plane. So 45 minutes roughly. Yeah, I mean, they have this uh, this book, it's Uzbekistan Airways, this magazine. You should definitely check it out. It gives you all the information about different places around the country. Let's go, let's go Tashkent. <laughs> we had a really quick one hour flight. I literally slept the whole time. I took like one foot out the window and I passed out. Woke up and we're landing. That's it, and that's Tashkent outside. Beautiful. All right, let's land. Here we go, here we go. Just like that, we're back in Tashkent. It's, uh, it's really sunny, it's hot. <laughs> oh, we have to get, oh my God, look at the plane, look at the plane. Whoa, taking off right there, crazy. All right, let's get on the bus, get our bags, and go to the hotel. I'm going straight back to the, I think the Hyatt Regency today. Hyatt Regency, the same hotel I stayed at before. I hate that I have a huge bag because I have to always wait for it. If not, I would have already been on the way to the hotel. Uh, it's taking around 15 minutes just for it to come out. It's coming out now, should be out shortly, and then we'll go to the hotel. Not so hot in Tashkent. Thermes was like boiling. What? <laughs> boiling. Too hot. It's, like it's nice. 45 degrees, 30. Yeah, yeah, too much. Too change? much. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uzbekistan dot travel. Travel to Uzbekistan. Whoa. Ways, no? So Tashkent is what, like a 25 minute drive from the airport? Yeah, ma maximum. I mean, we're entering Tashkent now, but it's still like really far from the hotel because the hotel's in the, in the center, center, yeah, center. The center yeah. It's like right next to uh, like the White House, Independence Square, lots of major, yes. you know, monuments in that area. As you can see, Tashkent is, it's really beautiful right now. I mean, blue skies, green, lots of green trees, uh, wide roads, it's like the main avenue. It's like, what is it, a four, four, you know, four, four lanes, so huge, eight lanes. And yeah, lots of, lots of buildings. Most of these buildings are like Soviet style buildings that were built during Soviet era. I gotta say, some of these buildings in the center are really remarkable, beautiful buildings. They're so different too. Like the government buildings are amazing. They have like a, you know, the, I think this is a museum as well. Yeah, museum, other government buildings, lots of residential buildings. Yeah, I mean, we've entered the center. Uh, we're literally pulling up to the hotel. It's like right here, hotel. It's, it's the best hotel in Tashkent, five-star hotel. My room, I'm sure, is gonna be amazing again. It, I slept so well the two nights that I stayed here in Tashkent. Really, really beautiful place. We are pulling up right now. There it is, I read it. My man, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you will like it. Hi, Irene. All right, let's go, let's go. All right. Oh man, I'm tired. And this is my room at the Hyatt Regency. As you can see, beautiful king-size bed. 
Got a little couch right here, work area, TV. The bathroom is my favorite part. Bathroom is beautiful, love it here. And yeah, today we had an epic day. We started off in Dedimus having like a Russian Uzbek breakfast. Not my favorite breakfast, but I mean, if you are Russian, you probably love it. <laughs> and then yeah, after that we went to the archaeological museum. My favorite part about the museum was the part of Alexander the Great. For me, Alexander the Great and Marco Polo are my favorite people in history, the ultimate world travelers. Then after that, we went to a Uzbek wedding. Big surprise, we went there. Unfortunately, it was a little early for us. We should've got there like an hour later, but because of the flight, I couldn't do that. So we had some shots. We saw the bride come in, saw the band start playing, and then went to the airport and flew to Tashkent. One hour flight, really affordable. I think it was like $40 for the flight. Well guys, I hope you love this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in Uzbekistan. Where have you been?